I'm sure some of you are familiar with the 2004 movie The Butterfly Effect, starring the one and only Kyle Korver, I mean Ashton Kutcher. Let's take a look at the synopsis of the movie, which did a great job of summing up this phenomenon. Changing the past can drastically alter the present. Now to reiterate on that, you could look at the butterfly effect as a fancy way of saying what if. What if you went back in time and were given the opportunity to make one small change in history, but you better be careful because that seemingly small change can cause a massive ripple effect, resulting in an entirely different outcome than what we see today. Even the sport of basketball as we know it might not have ever been invented if Springfield, Massachusetts had slightly warmer winters. If you didn't know already, the weather there in 1891 forced James Naismith to come up with a new indoor game in order to keep his students active. Even something as simple as a coin flip had implications that are still felt today. So without further ado, let's go through some crazy chain reactions and a whole bunch of what could have been. 2003 NBA Draft one of the most stacked drafts of all time, full of superstars, as well as several solid role players. There were so many options to pick from, but at the end of the day, everyone really wanted to get their hands on LeBron. The first 10 picks that were revealed at the draft lottery pretty much went as predicted, so when it got down to the final three teams to be revealed, it was pretty intense and nerve-wracking. The third pick goes to the Denver Nuggets. With the Nuggets landing the third overall selection, that meant that the Cavs and Grizzlies were the only teams left for a chance to draft LeBron. But for Memphis, there was one problem. You see, back in 1997, the Vancouver Grizzlies made a trade with the Detroit Pistons, and in that trade, the Grizzlies received Otis Thorpe, while the Pistons got back a future first round pick. So fast forwarding to 2003, wherever Memphis landed in this draft lottery, it would actually belong to the Pistons, unless the Grizzlies got the number one overall pick. That was the only way they would get to keep their pick. So you know first year president Jerry West was stressing out. Let's go ahead and watch how things went down. The second pick goes to the Memphis Grizzlies. Jerry West's face says it all. He knew right then and there that not only would he not be getting LeBron, but they also got pushed out of the top 10 altogether, just like that, because that second pick belonged to Detroit now. That must have been heartbreaking. I know that 1997 trade basically ended up costing them Carmelo and D-Wade, but at the same time, it was almost like a tease being that close to getting the number one spot. And what's crazy is that Memphis actually won 50 games the next season and managed to make the playoffs. So if LeBron ended up going to the Grizzlies, that obviously would have been a great addition to their already solid roster. We already talk about how Melo could have been a champion as a rookie if the Pistons drafted him. Well, if things went a little differently, you could certainly say the same thing for LeBron on the Grizzlies, as he wouldn't have had to carry the team to the same degree as he did with the Cavs. The basketball world was only one ping pong ball away from being sent in a completely different trajectory. Moving on to one that was more in Jerry West's control, in the 2014 offseason, the Golden State Warriors came off of a hard-fought seven-game series in which they lost to the Clippers in the first round, which resulted in the firing of coach Mark Jackson, as they felt they needed to make some changes in order to take the next step. And another move that they were considering was trading Klay Thompson for Kevin Love. The Warriors were understandably hesitant at first, but they knew they had to make somewhat of a sacrifice if they wanted to reach their ultimate goal. I mean, at the time, Kevin Love did just come off of an incredible individual season, so they definitely would be getting something back in return. And the trade was basically complete. It was pretty much a done deal, until Jerry West, who was a consultant for that Golden State team, stepped in and put the trade to a stop because he said he still really believed in Clay and had a feeling that he would become a special player. So what did Jerry ultimately do that ended up convincing Golden State to not go through with the deal? He threatened to quit his job if they didn't listen to him. 
As you know, Thompson would remain a warrior, and obviously that was the best thing that could have happened. All thanks to Jerry West having a sudden change of heart. So really quickly, what if the Warriors gave away Thompson in 2014? Well first of all, we wouldn't have witnessed his legendary Game 6 performance in the 2016 Western Conference Finals, which would mean OKC would have made the finals that year. And more importantly, Kevin Durant more than likely would not have joined the Warriors, as he instead probably would have stayed with the Thunder, enjoying his success there. Also, Clay was the one who inadvertently broke Kyrie's kneecap, so if he was traded to the T-Wolves in 2014, we wouldn't have seen any of these things go down. Just something to think about. We've all heard the story before, Len Bias tragically passing away just two days after being selected second overall by the Boston Celtics in the 1986 NBA Draft. He was a very explosive athlete who drew many comparisons to Michael Jordan. He was considered to be the most complete player at his position, and certainly had a bright future coming his way. But unfortunately, he was gone before he could ever step foot on the court. Of course, that was a huge blow to the Celtics organization, and had no other choice but to move on. So the following year, in the very next draft, they took Reggie Lewis in the first round, which turned out to be a great decision because by his second season, he would average 18 points per game for Boston. He looked like he was on his way to being a big part of their future, especially since Larry Bird was battling with injuries. Lewis eventually blossomed into an all-star caliber player elevating into averaging 20 points per game early in his career. But in 1993, bad luck would strike again for the Celtics organization. During a playoff game against the Charlotte Hornets, Reggie Lewis suddenly collapsed to the ground, lying there for several moments. Eventually, he did manage to get back up and tried to continue playing, but he couldn't fully catch his breath, so he was forced to call it a night. But little did he know, that would be his final game. The next day, a doctor informed him that he might have an irregular heartbeat, so he better do what he can to take care of that. But another doctor said that it wasn't all that serious, so of course, Lewis listened to the second doctor and continued to work out to get ready for the next season. But during an off-season practice, he once again fell to the ground out of nowhere, and unfortunately did not get back up this time. He was just 27 years old. So the question is, what if Len Bias and Reggie Lewis never tragically passed away so unexpectedly? Would the Celtics have stayed competitive well into the 90s, meaning that they probably would have been too good to draft Paul Pierce in 1998? Also meaning that the big three would have never existed, causing LeBron to actually stay in Cleveland instead of joining Miami? All I'm saying is, even if just one of them stayed alive, the dominoes might have fell in a different direction. Even though Bias and Lewis passed away 7 years apart from each other, what are the chances that the Celtics selected players in back-to-back -back drafts, who ultimately left us too soon? Absolutely scary. Next we have a story so bizarre, it's almost like it was meant to happen. It was February 2008, just about two years removed from the Heat's 06 championship. Things were not going too well in Miami. Shaq's career was on the decline as injuries were beginning to catch up to him. One day, the team was getting ready to start practice when Jason Williams arrived only 10 seconds late, but Pat Riley didn't care if he barely made it. It was still 10 seconds too long. So Riley yelled at him saying, get the hell out of here. Then Shaq stepped in and said, we're a team, we have to stick together. So Pat Riley responded by saying, if you don't like it, you can go too. That caused Shaq to say, why don't you make me, as he then got up in Riley's face. Udonis Haslam and Alonzo Mourning had to come to the rescue and hold Shaq back. It got pretty nasty. Pat Riley had enough with Shaq, so he did not hesitate to immediately trade Shaq to the Phoenix Suns, since the trade deadline was approaching anyway. The Heat would receive Sean Marion and Marcus Banks in return. A year later, Miami was in desperate need of a third big man to go along with Joel Anthony and Mark Blount. 
because Shaq and Morning were no longer there. So during the 2009 trade deadline, the Heat traded Marion and Banks to the Raptors in exchange for Jermaine O'Neal and Jamario Moon. Moon would later sign with the Cavs that offseason as Miami no longer needed him. So fast forward to 2011, the LA Clippers felt that they needed to move on from their aging point guard Baron Davis. So they traded him along with a first round pick to the Cavaliers in exchange for Mo Williams and Jamario Moon. Then came along the draft lottery a couple months later. The Cavs had a 19.9% chance of getting the number one pick with their own odds, while the Clippers pick, which the Cavs received from the Baron Davis trade, only had a 2.7% chance of winning the lottery. But somehow, the Clippers first round pick, that actually belonged to Cleveland now, landed the number one overall pick of the upcoming draft, which we all know turned out to be Kyrie Irving, and is just another example of the Clippers curse. So Cavs fans should be forever thankful that Jay Will did not show up to practice on time because otherwise LeBron probably wouldn't have gone back to Cleveland if Kyrie wasn't there. And we wouldn't have had the privilege of watching that epic 2016 NBA Finals. A seemingly unrelated event led to Kyrie. 